Specialist for Computer Science. Hi, I'm Janine Nakakura, resource teacher um, with the digital design team, helping out with computer science and blended learning. And um, Mickey, would you introduce yourself as? Hi hey everybody, um, I'm Miki Kamimura, also with the Office of Curriculum and Instructional Design. Thank you all for joining us today. And I'm Faith Ishihara, and uh, we're really happy to have you. So we'll let Brett begin the presentation. Thank you, Faith. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, well, here's the link for the presentation slides if you have not um, uh, copied it, if you would like to follow along. But otherwise, um, and we'll put it in the chat, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so starting off with the first slide, um, our desired outcomes for today is an overview of the K-12 computer science uh, standards for students. Um, we want to provide some strategies for implementing computer science during distance blended learning, uh, and awareness of resources for learning computer science in distance blended learning classrooms. Next slide. So. Uh, let's take a moment and consider what are some words and concepts that comes to mind when you think about what K-12 computer science education and distance learning or distance blended learning means to you. If you can use the chat, just type in some words or concepts. I will just give it a, a couple of seconds for you folks to, to enter uh, in the chat. Okay. Okay, no one has put anything. So let's uh, let's move on to the next slide. So, um, as shown in the word cloud example, there's actually a wide range of computer science words concepts that are involved in both um, uh, computer science and distance blended learning that students can learn to be successful online learners. Next slide. The K-12 computer science framework identifies the core concepts and practices that defines what computer science education currently looks like. Next slide. Here are the five core concepts for K-12 computer science education. Next slide. Let's take a moment to watch a short video that explains what the five core concepts are. What do you think about when you hear the words computer science? Computers, coding, programming? It's this and much more. Let's go back to the drawing board and look at the K-12 computer science framework. This framework organizes computer science into five core concepts representing key content areas. The first core concept is computing systems, which includes devices, hardware and software, and troubleshooting. People interact with a wide variety of computing devices that collect, store, analyze, and act upon information. A computing system is made up of hardware and software and communicates and processes information in a digital form. An understanding of hardware and software is useful when troubleshooting a computing system that does not work as intended. The second core concept, Networks and the Internet, deals with network communication and cybersecurity. Computing devices typically do not operate in isolation. Networks connect computing devices to share information and resources. Cybersecurity deals with transmitting information securely across networks. The third core concept, Data and Analysis, involves storage, collection, visualization, and transformation, and inference in models. Computing systems exist to process data effectively. Data is collected and stored so that it can be analyzed to better understand the world. The fourth core concept, algorithms and programming, includes algorithms, variables, control, modularity, and program development. 
An algorithm is a sequence of steps designed to accomplish a specific task. Algorithms are translated into programs or code to provide instructions for computing devices. And the last core concept is impacts of computing, which includes culture, social interactions, and safety, law, and ethics. Practicing good digital citizenship empowers our students to make safe, smart, and ethical decisions. So the next time you hear computer science, remember the five core concepts from the K-12 computer science framework. Let's teach our students to be computationally literate and proficient in the concepts of computer science for the 21st century and beyond. Next slide. In 2018, the Hawaii DOE adopted the K-12 computer science standards for students from the Computer Science Teachers Association, or better known as CSDA. They are organized by five core concepts we just reviewed and by sub-concepts and grade band level. For today's session, we will focus primarily on the five core concepts since we only have a limited amount of time to go over all of the details. Next slide. Let's take a closer look at the five core concepts, starting off with computing systems. Next slide. Computing systems basically involves learning about the physical components or hardware and the instruction or software, such as the ones being used for dis distance blended learning. Next slide. Distance blended learning typically involves using a variety of technology that are based on the computing systems concepts. For example, students need to be able to use hardware, such as laptops, desktop, mobile devices, software, such as Google Suite and Classroom, connect to the internet using wireless or wired, and to do basic troubleshooting when uh, checking connection or rebooting the computer. Next slide. For elementary, uh, here's an activity for elementary students to learn about computing systems that can be easily implemented in your distance blended learning classroom. There's a series of digital eBooks by Linda Liukas called Hello Ruby that students can borrow from the HIDOE Sora Digital Library. And we have the links here for your reference. The journey inside the the computer book is a great way to introduce students to the computing systems concept. Next slide. For secondary students, they can learn about computing systems through virtual field trips or tours at either the Computer History Museum or the next slide, the National Museum of Computing. Both sites provide students a broad perspective of the history of computer hardware and software. There are also YouTube videos available for both museum sites. Next slide. For a more hands-on computing system learning format, students can also learn how to program the virtual Arduino coding car without the physical hardware device. The Arduino cars like a Tesla with all kinds of sensors built into it and can be programmed to drive itself autonomously. The, Artu the online, I'm sorry, the Arduino online website provides self-guided videos and lessons that students can learn completely online. This wraps up the computing systems core concept section and hope you found these resources helpful for your students to learn about computing systems in a distance blended learning uh, classes. Next, I will turn it over to Janine, who will be going over the next core concept algorithms and programming. All right, thank you, Brett. I'm going to try to turn on my video temporarily. Hopefully my bad internet um, stays, um, is good. Um, so I would like to go over the core concept of algorithms and programming. So let's go to the next slide. And um, there are, um, local events and national events for Computer Science Ed Week, which is happening next week, that um, incorporate algorithms and programming. 
So we have, oops, um, yes, we have um, national events. Mickey is just, she, she's one step ahead of me. Um, we have um, national events. So if you go to the national um, webpage um, for computer science ed week and click on teach, you can find, um, you know, there is social justice. So if you scroll down, you can get a quick look um, of I'll, I'll go over more later, but just to let there's and is computer science ed week. Okay, let's go back to our, our side. And I want to give a shout out to Celeste Endo. Or um, incorporate computer science into, um, you know, with her students and at her school. So. Is an event and there's a dance party happening, I think. It's on um, Tuesday next week from 3 to 4 p.m. So if you click on the link above, it will take you to more events besides the dance party. All of the different events. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit more. Um, there's a webinar for our code, um, code HS, but the one with all of the activities that you might be interested in, um, click me. And there's a whole week um, for Hawaii. Um, you have a wide range of activities you can choose from, from the dance party to recorded webinars to family code nights and so on. All right, so let's go back to the um, original slide. And want to go over more in depth what you can do during con computer science ed week. Well, um, one thing I just to share with you, I've been attending attending my first ISTE uh, virtual conference. Never been to the real one um, face to face, but um, I'm attending virtually. And um, I attended a session earlier this week. So um, this is a link from LCPS um, public school system in Virginia. I think it was if you click on that link. They have a whole, um, just a whole presentation for computer science ed week, and you can enter to win prizes at the end. They said, don't enter because you have to be from Virginia, but they just have a whole bunch of great resources, um, like stuff on um, things on algorithms, um, vocabulary, programming, coding, um, just for every day of the week, something that you can do with your students. All right, so um, you can take a look at that later. I'm just giving you a taste of this resource. The other thing is um, Hour of Code um, happens. It's year round, but um, you know a lot of people try to do something for Hour of Code during con computer science ed week. So one of my favorites from last year is AI or artificial intelligence for Ocean. So if you click on that, um, We'll skip the video. You can watch that. We'll do the flip learning thing. You can watch that on your own time. Um, so while Mickey is kind of running through this, this is uh, artificial intelligence trying to figure out what is a fish. Okay, so just read the directions and click continue. And basically, um, this program is trying to figure out what makes a fish a fish. So we just keep going, continue, continue. Okay. So the AI does not know if something's fish or trash. It has to process images, look for patterns, so we continue. So just a whole bunch of objects screen by and the artificial intelligence. So you're training it basically. So continue. All right, so anyway, you can play with this more in your own time, but I just want to give you a taste of one hour of code activity that I enjoyed from last year. And then um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't have a computer. How can I do hour of code? Well, you don't need a computer. You can do an hour a device. So let's click on hour of code unplugged, just so you can see.
just a little slow. Okay, so there are some unplugged activities there. You can see um, dance party is one unplugged activity. Um, if you have questions about that, you can ask Celeste. She's the expert at that um, and so forth. So there are different activities that you can do without a device. Okay, so let's go back to our original slide. Okay, next slide. Um, I also want to share this resource with you. How many of you um, are familiar with the choice boards that came out during fourth quarter of the past school year? You can type in the chat. I'm just curious to know how many of you know about the choice boards and um, how many of you have used it? I'll give you some time. I've seen them, I saw it, okay. Give you some wait time. Yes, I've used them. Okay, great. So we started, um, computer science actually started um, adding activities. They invited us to, you know, add our activities. Um, I think it was like in the sixth week, fifth week, sixth week. So we started um, in kind of, you know, after the first few weeks. So if you click on a Hawaii DOE choice boards, um, what we did was, you know, we did it by week and um, Faith did the early elementary, I did the, like grades four to grades eight, and Brett did high school, um, look for activities. And they're unplugged and plugged activities. And um, computer science, I think, is on the second page. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so there we go. There's So we have plugged and unplugged activities. So what we did was we um, arranged them by grade level after we were done, because we had like over 200 something activities um, so we thought, how can we make this useful for teachers? So we decided, Faith and I um, and um, Brett, we decided to put them together by grade level. So let's go back to the original slide. So um, the highlights again, pre K to 12, we aligned them to the standards, most of them. We have plugged and unplugged activities. We covered digital citizenship and computational thinking. So if you click on the top link where it says um, CS Choiceboards by grade level, we it, it took some time, but we arranged them by grade level. So if you just click on the grade level, you can go to the one that you're looking for. For example, if you're high school, you can click on high school. If you're grade one, you click on grade one, and it's all arranged by grade level. And the standard is in parentheses, if there was a standard that was um, associated with that activity. All right, so let's go back to original slide again. So what we're going to do now is an activity. So you should have your square piece of paper because that was your homework. Um, and we're going to click on the instructions. Have your square piece of paper ready. Uh, if you didn't know about it, just a casual thing. I'm going to talk over this Or made. So have your square piece of paper ready and try to follow these directions. If you don't have them, just watch. Practice. All right. Sorry, um, I was told that my video is cutting in and out, or I'm cutting in and out, so my video is off now. But um, I do have my um, boxes already made, um, like a cooking show. They're already made. Um, if that was too fast for you, um, if you're with real students, what we do is we stop the video or we go back 
um, and, and, you know, reshow the steps. So, um, did anybody, was anybody able to make their box <laughs> that fast? Um, you can type in the chat if you were able to do that. Um, it was kind of fast, I know, but, um, yep, too fast. But at least you have the idea. So, you can go back and try again and see if you can follow those instructions or that algorithm. All right, so that is an algorithm. Good way to practice following directions. Okay, next slide. So, um, Dr. Michael Ida, he's an excellent teacher. That's why this is an excellent module. Um, he is really, I, I look up to him for teaching computer science. We visited his classroom and um, he couldn't make it today because he had an extended faculty meeting, but he did, you know, um, give some tips and pointers um, and typed straight into this um, slide presentation. So I'm going to share what he what he wants to share with all of you. And here we are, um, yeah, um, with algorithms and programming for grade six to twelve. He said even in more advanced content focused computer science courses at the high school level, students appreciate you know hands on kinesthetic activities that involve manipulatives and visual demonstrations. So I know this is a busy looking slide, but here's a choice board activity with cups that Faith, um, you know. Um, developed and put into the choice board for elementary. So that's a kindergarten standard. But if you look at the high school standard in the um, pink outline, you know, um, it can cut, you know, something, an activity like this with hands on um, activities with cups could cover all the way from kindergarten to high school and students appreciate those kinds of things. Okay, next slide. So here's something else that Dr. Ida shared. He has um, unplugged activities from the new and classic versions of CS Unplugged, and he also has some suggestions for distance learning. So um, click on, let's click on suggestions for distance learning, just so we can see what it looks like. So there you go. Okay, so you can see, you know, if you want to do mind reading magic or um, binary challenge, etc. cetera, um, you can take a look at it later. Okay, let's go back to the original slide. Okay, next slide. Tips and tricks. This is really great. So if you click on CS teaching tips, there's a wealth of resources, all nicely organized. So if you click on one, just if you want to take a look at assessment, you have little tip sheets, nice, nice and um, clean, clear uh, checklists and tips. Okay, so um, some great resources from Dr. Ida. Okay, next slide. And here's the fun one. Okay, so he said. You know, visualizing algorithms or implementing algorithms can be hard. So even advanced students have trouble implementing them. So he suggests starting with conceptual visualization rather than code or even using pseudocode, which is you know, like written directions, not using the actual coding language. So we're going to um, show you something from Algorithmics, okay, a YouTube video, and it's six minutes long. We're not going to show you the whole thing, but you can get an idea of how um, sorting happens through dance. Okay, so let's watch this. So maybe um, skip to the middle. So you can see how they sort themselves out. So it's sorting the computer science way, but through dance. Okay, so um, we'll, we won't show you the whole six minutes, but um, if you feel like watching it, you can. In the time. Okay, next slide. And so um, that that um, covers my section, algorithms and programming. Now I will turn it over back over to Brett for networks and the internet. Thank you, Janine. Uh, next slide. For the next core concept, networks and the internet, students learn about how computers are connected to communicate with one another and are connected to a global network called the internet. Although it has become easier to communicate over these networks, there are also a wide range of privacy or cybersecurity issues that students need to be aware of to protect themselves as online digital citizens. 
Next slide. Distance blended learning typically involves a variety of networks and the internet concepts that students need to be familiar with to be able to access their classroom and or resources. Students also need to learn how to access their user accounts and use strong passwords to prevent unauthorized access. Next slide. Yeah. Here are some activities for elementary students. In addition to the one mentioned in the computing systems section, there is another digital ebooks called uh, by Linda Lucas called Hello Ruby Expedition to the Internet that introduces students to the network and the internet concept through storytelling and imaginative activities. In addition, the Common Sense Digital Passport is an interactive game that addresses the concepts around online communication and safety. Next slide. For secondary students, there is an interactive activity called Computer Networks from the PBS Learning Media, where students can learn how computers communicate with one another through networks. For more advanced students, they may want to explore the free IBM Open P-Tech Cybersecurity Getting Started course and learn the basics understanding of cybersecurity terminology and concepts. This wraps up the network and internet core concept section. I will turn it back over to Janine, who will go over the data and analysis concept. All right, thank you, Brett. And I'm not turning my video on this time. Hopefully it'll be um, not as choppy. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So again, back to the choice boards, um, you know, I think I counted over 250 activities on there for computer science. So, you know, something as simple as um, arranging shapes into patterns. This is um, from Faith again um, for the elementary grade levels, early elementary grade levels. Um, and so there's the standard off to the right. Um, so you can do things like sorting shapes and that's computer science, represent data using multiple encoding schemes. Okay, so next slide. Um, so today, yeah, I put a lot of things in here, um, just like yesterday, today, because I'm um, attending ISTE and meetings, talking to people, all these great resources. So today we met with the News Literacy Project um, folks, and um, they shared that they have a special edition for ele the election and COVID, but I, I took a look at their election um, special edition, and they had a whole wealth of um, resources for election data. So let's click on the link to the left and we'll give you guys a little quiz, okay, to see um, how good you are. But first, let's take a look at the resources. Okay, so scroll down. And if you go all the way to the bottom, and by the way, this is um, a strategy um, I found works for distance learning. If you have different presenters, it really helps to have one person control the slides instead of trying to pass the ball or change presenters. Okay, so thank you, Mickey, for being a good um, slide presenter for us. So there are all these resources. Um, choose one to look at Mickey. <laughs> I'll let Mickey choose. Okay, quiz. Can you make sense of data? Mm. All right, so we're going to take a quiz. You can type your answer in the chat. Okay, so we're going to start the assessment. Um, and you, maybe you might want to look at it on your own screen because it might be too small for, from the presentation, but do your best. Um, which of these news headlines is appropriate given the data presented below? So it says support for in-person K-12 schooling and um, to the left. So I'm going to look at my slides to the left. It's the number of respondents and up above um, or going across upper middle, upper middle and lower income. Okay, so which is the correct answer? And, um, you know, I have uh, one of the sessions I went to today. It said stu some students are afraid to, you know, speak up or give their answer. Um, so you're, you're not. You don't have to put your answer, but if you feel like sharing your answer, it would be 
Great. Oh, and some of you are doing it privately. Smart. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, we, we previewed this before um, this presentation today, and it, it, this is kind of challenging. So you have to eliminate choices. So um, somebody told me it might be C. Let's try C. Mickey, can you try C? Oh, that's not it. Okay. Um, it's okay to make mistakes, right? That's part of the learning process. So let's go back. Let's, it's not C. And I don't think it's D because being fearful is an opinion and I don't think their feelings were in there. So it's either A or B. Which one do you think it is? I helped narrow it down for you folks. It's like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? 50-50, A or B? Okay, Pam says B, let's try B. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, Pam, she was correct. Um, this chart shows, um, anyway, you can read it on your own, but. Let's go to the next one because we 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 actually looked at the next one and this one was challenging. Okay, and this incorporates math and you know your reading comprehension and um, of course computer science data and analysis. So, what was the unemployment rate in April according to this news clipping? And it says the U.S. unemployment rate has plummeted thirty percent from its peak in April. The rate as of July was ten point two percent. Hmm. So if you if you feel brave, type your answer in the chat, or you can send it to me privately, which I thought was a a, a good way to um, give an answer without everyone knowing. Hmm. And we'll give you some wait time because that's good teaching practice. Challenging, huh? Okay, so. B, Charles is B, Charles is brave. Okay, let's choose B. He was a math teacher too though. Oh, woo -hoo. you can keep your um, certification, Charles, for math, teaching math, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna, um, there are more questions, but we don't wanna spend the whole time doing a quiz. So let's go back to our slides. Um, next slide, data visualization. This is from Dr. Ida again. And um, I just did screenshots from data viz and the data visualization catalog um, because he says data science is ex an exciting subject that often gets obscured by math and code heavy presentations. So he recommends getting students excited with some visualizations instead. So real quickly, click on data viz, for example. And um, I thought this was kind of interesting. Click on shape. What shape do you want? Um, I saw a heart shape. So click on shape at the top. It's at the top. Um, way, yeah, right there at the top. See, there's a heart. I, I was just clicking and I don't know what that is supposed to be, but maybe something that's heart shaped or something with a heart. So you can, you can choose you know, what kind of data you want to see in what shape. Very cool. Okay, so let's let's go back to the original slide and next slide. Okay, so now that um, wraps up data and uh, analysis, a whole bunch of resources for you to check out later. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Faith now. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Yes, so the last piece of the five core concepts of computer science is impacts of computing, which includes digital footprint and identity, like uh, how we present ourselves online, privacy and security, and news and media literacy. So um, next slide. Uh, I like this picture because it reminds us that we don't give our children the keys to the car and say, drive safely. What does that mean? And yet we give our students devices and say, be ethical users. What does that mean? Do they know the rules of the road, how to address, assess danger and avoid making mistakes that could impact their future? Next slide. So the Center for Cyber Safety and Education conducted a study of students in grades four to eight to understand the extent to which they engage in age inappropriate or dangerous behaviors online. And this um, infographic kind of highlights some of their findings. So they found that 40% of these students connected or chatted online with a stranger. 15% tried to meet up with a stranger. 
11% of the students in grades 4 to 8 actually met a stranger, and 6% revealed their home address to a stranger. So next slide. So this graph uh, illustrates the dramatic increase of smartphone ownership between 2015 uh, to 2019 by students ages 8 through 16. What sites are they visiting? Um, what are they posting? Who are they communicating with? What are they liking? And um, all of that. If you go to the next slide, do they realize that everything they do online is permanent and searchable? So later you can watch this video. It's about a minute and it kind of reinforces that concept that really everything we do online is permanent and searchable. And according to Work World, in 2016, 77% of potential employers use search engines like Google to screen their job candidates. And 35% of them eliminated candidates from consideration based on what they found online. So um, next slide, we're gonna listen to this um, principal, a technology teacher and a school counselor about why they think online safety is such an important thing to teach our students. So if we play the video, please. Regarding online safety, um... I was surprised how many students said, yeah, I feel comfortable telling somebody my address online. A student left her location services on her Instagram account, and therefore an older teen from another city was able to find her and come to our campus. And that was a really scary situation for that student and that family. The address conversation wasn't the only thing that they were not aware of that you shouldn't share online, such as your date of birth, your parents' name. They were clueless to all of that. Thank you. So if we could go to the next slide. So how can we teach our students to have empathy for others while being safe and responsible digital citizens? Common sense education may be one solution. And here are some reasons. They offer an award-winning research-based K-12 curriculum. Their curriculum is developed in partnership with Project Zero at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. They were established and have been trusted since 2010, and their resources are free to educators. So next slide. Among the many uh, lesson plans and games and interactive um, Opportunities in common sense education is this interactive social media test drive. And so we can click on that and we find that um, it's an educational program that lets young people practice social media simulations. So um, we scroll down and get to that button that says um, try a module. And um, you can kind of explore freely here, but you find that students through these different simulations, have an opportunity to practice um, learning key ideas, practice how they would respond to them, their social media skills, um, explore their timeline and reflect on some of the actions that they've taken. So we can go back to the slides. So if our digital pres presence is an amplification of our identity, then we need to leverage that to our advantage and make it an extension of our best selves. So in addition to um, footprint identity, there's privacy and security. So here is, um, you can click on how secure is my password and try entering a password similar to the one you currently use and see how long it would take a computer to crack your current password. Oh, 100 million years. <laughs> so, so if you want to, uh, some strategies on how to help our students make even stronger passwords, because Brett talked about that in the networks um, portion, how important it is to have strong passwords. So we can give some 
um, strategies to our students, like select a word or phrase that is at least 12 to 14 characters long and <clears throat> change it up a little bit to include capital and lowercase letters, include numbers and special symbols. Another strategy is to even try a sentence that they can remember, something like, the first house I ever lived in was at 613 Aloha Street and rent, rent was 700 a month. So taking the first letter of that sentence to make up this really complex password that um, I think would take pretty long for a computer to crack. And um, we, you can play with that and see if you can come up with some really strong passwords and then keeping them in secure places. Um, so the next slide. Now we're going to take a look at news and media literacy. We want our students to be able to be critical thinkers and media literate when they read the news. So here are some tips to help um, filter out what they're reading. So recognizing that misinformation um, manipulates our emotions and a common way they um, people who post on the internet manipulate our emotions is through sensationalizing. So a lot of times you see these sensational headlines and it often includes some celebrity and that is referred to as clickbait. And it's a form of false advertising. They really want you to bait you in to click on that headline. So we have to know that um, that is typically false and sometimes there's data collection in the background. So we want to question before we click. Then assessing to differentiate news and opinions. So um, the news states the facts, but the opinions are people's interpretation or um, reactions to those facts. And although everyone has, um, is, you know, we're not all subject matters, but everyone has an important voice but we as consumers or readers need to be able to recognize when something is somebody's opinion and when it's their, it's an actual fact. Checking the sources of information, researching a person's statement. Do they have an agenda? Are they a trusted, respected source, a reliable credit, a credited authority on a subject? Um, do they provide their sources and details? And um, on the notes section of this particular slide, I've listed a few periodicals that are generally respected by most authorities and experts in their fields. Then there's corroborating of information. So checking different reliable sources to see if there's similar information that corroborates what you're reading um, and avoiding the spread of misinformation. So if you find out that you've posted something that is incorrect, then take it down and post a correction. So next slide. So here's some just quick tips how to sanitize before you share. And then there's a link to this. And if you have access, you can click on the link and try this quiz. Um, we'll give you a minute to try it. Okay, so um, I can let's see if you did try it. So the question, the first question, um, which of the following actions should you take when trying to decide whether an online news article is credible? So it's read the article and try to corroborate. So um, that's the correct answer. And then imagine if the message said due to an emergency. School has been canceled and uh, what should you do? So it's checking the website, making sure you're looking for corroborating information, checking the source, looking for clues. And so it's all of the above. And um, if the article says scientists find playing video games improves your memory, should you share that article? Well, um, it's probably good that you um, Oh, 
if you when you find out that it's incorrect, just delete the post and make a correction. And I hope this helps you to feel somewhat more confident when you um, take a look at news articles. Okay, next slide. Um, yeah, next one. Thanks. So why is computer science so important? Well, it underpins many aspects of our modern world. The ubiquity of computing in our lives is exponentially increasing, and our reliance on all things technology is also increasing so rapidly. It's changing the fabric of our society and our daily lives. So remember that the five core com concepts of computer science make up the well-rounded education we want to provide to all of our K-12 students to prepare them for the accelerated digital transformation we're experiencing around the world today. And we hope this session provides a unifying vision to guide computer science from, the, from a subject for the fortunate few to an opportunity that is an essential digital literacy skill for all. So we we'll invite you to complete our feedback form and um, thank you for your participation. And we're open to questions if you have any. Would it be appropriate to, to do a little um, it, uh, a demonstration, not really demonstration, but show some information. The dance party coming up. Absolutely, thank you, Celeste. <laughs> um, so what we're trying to do, um, in the lower grades at kindergarten is have have the students learn some offline coding. So we have the computer, um, code.org, <laughs> when block, and can you see my screen? I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, right. yes. Okay, so we have a when block, and the students, they know like the wool and the dab, but then they're getting creative, creating their own princess jump, DJ dance, robot dab. And, and, and some, a student thought of the aloha twirl, then they started to remix it with the warm twirl, deer twirl, and they're getting very creative. After this, we're starting to show them the code.org dance party, dances that students have created. They get to dance to it. And and so it's a lot of fun. We hope you can make it. We're going to go straight into the code.org dance party dances. Students around Hawaii have um, the opportunity to create. We will be wearing costume if you have. If not, just come in and have fun with us learning to code and dance. Hey, Celeste, I have a question. So, you know, those block um, that you just showed us, the unplugged blocks for the coding? Yes. Do yes. do you still have that um, loop? Um, oh, like a repeat block. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so we made a repeat block and the kids got to decide how many times they want to. And so we build the four steps that they're going to yes, do. Yes. And, then and then do you think how many times to repeat and yes. do the loop? And we awesome. pick favorite songs. It's a lot of fun. I love it. I just love it. They can do it. Um, yeah, we've been doing with the lower grades, especially because they need that time to do something kinesthetic and visual. Yeah. Yes, and it kind of um, interacts, interweaves the arts, you know, the performing arts with coding and exactly. um, science. And we really want them to be so super creative. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, last, this is um, your former teacher, Ms. Nakakura. <laughs> Yeah. That's the same since high school. <laughs> Thank you. Would we be able to do like a little sample right now? Oh my Would goodness, really? <laughs> okay, I didn't prepare, but um, yeah. So um, give do some talking, and then I'll I'll put up, put up something. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So actually, we um we borrowed your idea, Celeste, and we um shared it with our office and try to get them, you know, this kinesthetic coding experience and asking them to dance. And so um, it, <laughs> even for adults, it was lots of fun. Right on. And 
it is so kinesthetic and, and so easy yeah. to just dance together. We're trying to build a gallery of Hawaii dances. So oh, we so give you cool. on that on that um the graphic that Janine put up there, there's yeah. how the students can submit their dances. And it's gonna be going beyond the R of code. We'll still add some more, so keep on adding to the, the gallery of dances. But uh, let me try to get up the screen. And what's wonderful is they have a little gallery, but we want to make it even bigger and you no know, Hawaii based, place based, Hawaii based. So let me share this. <laughs> I'm going to mute my, my face because my Macintosh um, finds that if I mute my face, it's easy for some reason. <laughs> so okay. if, if you if you scroll down the dance party, well, we're, we're going to do an intro to the dance party that day, um, December 8th, 3 to 4 p.m. But if we scroll down, here's a gallery, a little gallery. You can click on and you can keep dancing up on the right hand side that are um, kind of pre-made dances and you can remix them. So that is super cool to look at too. Uh, down below, there's gonna have this, students have created that day, we'll have actual students um, who are gonna be dancing side by side and demonstrating. So we got the ecstatic dance um, team to help us out with that. Uh, we're gonna look at how it works. Can you see the screen? Yes. Right on. And they can choose their age. And, and so, you know, we're going to go over how um, you can read the code. We're going to set up with the background effect of a spiral black and white. We're going to repeat 10 times. <laughs> and make a frog. Um, the layout. And, and so this is someone that is created on the code.org website. It hasn't been, that's not a Hawaii student yet, okay? Um, and then when we press the left arrow, they're gonna do the dab, right arrow, they're gonna dab, dab, they're gonna all drop. Okay, so let's take a look, if we run, everybody, we're gonna get up. One, two, three. And I'm gonna press the arrows. Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, nice. Good. Bend your knees. Let's go all the way to the ground. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Come on, Woo All right. Keep on going. You're going to have hopefully, these dances from different students around our state. That's what we're aiming to have. And they're going to be from um, lower grades, elementary to high school, if you don't mind joining us. Okay. Thank you. Hey, by the way, this is Janine. I shared in the chat um, what we did with um, OSIS back then, um, now OSID. We did it with our adult coworkers. And um, there's a picture at the end. I think that's Celeste. Um, yeah, at the end. But we, we did a, like a five, 10 minute kind of dance party thing with our coworkers also a couple of years oh, ago. Yes. It was a lot of fun. That's her Code Your Courier. Um, yeah. Seth. Yep. So I, I have some of Celeste's resources in there we can't wait to see what all the students code uh, yeah go ahead and, um, submit cho a choreograph dances if the students want to and we'll play it on the dance party if if it's really awesome we'll pick the best though all the all the good ones will be part of the gallery well thank you so much for sharing that um so does anyone else have questions or um Something they can do quickly in the next couple minutes. Giving that wait time. Um, if not, um, are we going to um, close our webinar soon? Sure. Yeah. Before we do, I just want to thank everyone for participating today and um, hope to have you back again tomorrow at our Implementing Computer Science Teacher Standards during this blended learning presentation. Um, there was one question in the chat um, from Jeffrey. He wanted to know if this presentation will be record, um, will be shared, the, re the recording, will it be shared? Yes. As soon as um, it gets all processed and um, Mickey, are you going to post it on a website somewhere? 
Yes, it will be on um, the continuity of learning site. Um, all of the actual excellence modules will all be put into one place and available after December 18th. So thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. We Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you, Celeste. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. I'll stop the recording. Bye.